All right, three, two, one. We're hot. What's going on, gentlemen? Hey, we're here. Hola. A day late, but yeah. that's okay. Shit happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Welcome back, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Episode Welcome sixty-one. Of- sixty-one, huh? Or oh, yeah. sixty-two. Well, that's oh, 62. You're right. God damn it. Every <laughs> fucking week. I even wrote it down and I fucked it up this time. Like, how does that <laughs> even happen? I might have to get fired. I don't know. I don't know if I'm cut out for this. It's 62 <laughs> or 61? It's 62. Looks 60. like I'll take over the intro. <sighs> 61 was last week. You About should take, time. take over the intro, Marvin. Go ahead. <laughs> you have my full blessing. Nice. What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. How was everybody's week? Um, how was my week? Pretty mm-hmm. good. Pretty good. Okay, you sure? Mm-hmm. Haven't been doing a lot of gaming. Been watching some stuff. Nice. Yeah. You been watching? But yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, well, I I watched I watched uh, Dark Knight Rises. Oh, you got the around trilogy. To that. Nice, nice. nice. Yeah. Um, what else? Do you agree? with I started that watching. Uh, wait, go ahead. Did you agree that Dark Knight Rises is not as good as the other two? Uh, yeah. It's good. I do agree. It's good. Okay. It is good. It is good. Go on. Uh, um, what else have I been? Oh, I've been watching X Files. Ah, yes, oh, that's, that's right. right. I suggested <laughs> that to you, and you started it. Yes, sir. How far Pretty are good. you? Uh, maybe five, six episodes in, something like that. Are you watching it with C? Or are you watching it by yourself? No, nah, just me. Are you liking it so far? Yeah, it's great. I wasn't sure. I mean, it is a great show, objectively. It's just, it's very dated by this point. It's like very 90s. Yeah, you it's tell. dated, but it's not yeah. dated in the way like Walking Dead is dated. Like, it still holds up in today's. Yeah, I true. think so. I think so. <laughs> like, Walking Dead is more recent, but it's like more dated because it is more recent, if that makes sense. Like, they had all the tools to. Dusty, could you so, turn your mic up a little bit? Sorry to interrupt you. You're coming in uh, a, little bit, sure. a little quiet. Just a just a, just a hair. Turn it up. Thank you. So you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's great. I like it. You're only six episodes in, so you haven't even scratched the surface of what's going on in this fucking show. Right. So I think you're really gonna like it. But Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, coming into the show. I didn't really know what it was about, even. Really? I Yeah, I just thought it was like a detective show. It is. Crime solving, which it is, but I didn't, know, I didn't know what the X-Files were. I didn't know that it was based on like a real life thing, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. If that is real, I don't know if that's real at all. Or, at all but. There is like a branch of the FBI that, that like investigates like, I don't know, mysterious shit, but not in the capacity the of the in the show, yeah. Um, right. But, uh, yeah. Well, they're not called the X files. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think so. That's fine with me. Wait till you get to the Vince Gilligan episode. I want to, I'm actually not <laughs> going to tell you which one it is. And I want to see if you could actually point it out. And I'll, the only hint that I'll give oh, they're you. they're not all directed by the same. Well, no. They're all different. The, oh, okay. the directors are different and the writers are different. Vince Gilligan never directed on the X-Files, but he wrote several oh. episodes. Oh, okay. Okay. One of them, I'll tell you off the bat, is where he met, um, what's his name? Uh, oh God, Walter White for the first time. That's why he <laughs> had him in mind for Walter White. Oh, wow. Okay. For working cool. on the X-Files. But there's... The episode of, of Breaking Bad with the fly, when the fly is in the lab and yeah. Walt is like freaking out, it's mm-hmm. such a fucking X Files episode. It's <laughs> crazy. It like, that's funny. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. I think you'll be able to spot like Vince Gilligan's influence on the X Files when it comes yeah. around. All right. But, um, but yeah, no, I'm glad you're liking it. Yep. You got a lot oh. ahead of you. And you got to make sure you watch yeah, the movies where they fall into the series. Especially the first movie. Yeah. The first movie is very much about the mythology of the show. Mm. The okay. second movie, not so much. Okay. Okay, so I just want to let you know that. <laughs> but, 
So yeah, I don't know if the actual X-Files department in the FBI is real, but there were 10 episodes based on uh, real stories in real life that happened. Oh, that's cool. Or like inspired by, so yeah. Inspired, yeah. A lot of interesting stuff. What about you, Dusty? What you been watching? Uh, I've watched a few movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still watching Lioness. I think they're on episode eight now. It might be done or they may have one more left it's pretty close keeping up with foundation but um i watched mobland it's a um, steven dorf and john travolta it's a gritty little uh crime thriller mm. um it's okay 5.3 yeah that's rough <laughs> um, it's got some really good stuff but it's a little slow at times too and the the main actors are a little unknown so it's just like they're supporting steven dorf plays the bad guy but what else is new does, but... yeah yeah speaking uh, of i watched die heart die heart kevin smith yeah. trying to be an action star kevin hart i was gonna say kevin, kevin hart, hart. Yeah, he kevin met kevin smith. hart oh, okay it is kevin. Oh, okay <laughs> Also, yeah, John hard, Travolta. Right. Did you want a John Travolta kick lately, or what's the deal? I did not know that he <laughs> was in that actually. So I okay. just saw it and decided to watch it. This has a five point one. You're really fucking scraping the bottom of the well, barrel. <laughs> comedies, you know. Uh huh. Mm. That's fair. Well, I watched Team. I watched Team NT as well and Indy. Oh, yeah, nice. we were supposed to talk about Indy today actually, but we scrapped it. A mm. because Marvin hasn't seen the other ones, and also we both. I think yep. you said it was kind of not even worth talking about, right? Like it's not that good. I mean, it's we could talk about it, but it's it's nothing well, great. <laughs> one of my other friends watched it. And she said it was like terrible, but it's mid Disney. Yeah, surprising because what's his name directed it, so you know he's got some bangers under his belt. I, I, I'm gonna watch it. Maybe I'll watch it tonight when I got nothing to do. See what it's uh, see what what the deal is. Um, Who directed it? James Mangold. Oh, James Mangold. Yeah. And you said it was better than the, the last one, but obviously right. doesn't hold the candle to the original. Thing right. They should have just stopped making them at hey, last well, crusade. You know, franchises, baby. <laughs> Speaking of things that you've watched, have you got around to watching Superman and Lois yet, or are you just fucking with me? No, it's still on my <laughs> watch list, but I have not. Cause it's never happening. I've been getting so many fucking... For some reason, I've just been getting, like, clips of it on YouTube now. And uh, it's just reminding me of, like, how good of a fucking show is. I'm not sure how excited I am for the next season, because it's going to be, like, they're cutting out a lot of the regulars, and it's going to be a smaller cast. Like, are they going to be able to tell a similar good story with less yeah. supporting actors and actresses? Well, I'm not sure it's that good if Dusty hasn't finished it. It's good. Man. No, it's good. I just haven't all finished I'm saying. it. all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin's over here playing devil's at Marvin's an agent of chaos <laughs> like the Joker he's trying to fucking yep. drive a rift between me and Dusty <laughs> no it's honestly the best live action Superman we've ever had like Christopher Reeve like those movies are great and live in nostalgia brain right but this is the best live action Superman as far as I'm concerned it's just an unbelievable show there's a scene so one I, I, the reason I brought it up is because I've watched it like a few minutes ago there's a scene I'm going to spoil it for you, Dusty. It's not a spoiler on the se season. It's just like a, a thing that happens. Somebody in the town of Smallville is like a fucking redneck, like hillbilly drug addict guy. And he's like borderline abusive to his family. And in this particular episode, he uh, hits one of Clark's kids in a confrontation and the kid comes home with a black eye. And then Lois sees it and she's like, who the fuck did this? And Lois is a bad bitch. I've seen that episode. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've watched. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, okay. Yeah. Well, let me explain it to Marvin. Then. It was his his girlfriend's his girlfriend's dad. Yeah. yeah. The girlfriend's dad, and Lois is a bad bitch. So she goes over there first, and the guy like pulls a gun on her, and she's like, "You don't fucking scare me. I'm Lois Lane. I've dealt with like some of the biggest fucking criminals this fucking world has to offer." And then fucking Clark gets wind of it. Whoo, baby. <laughs> and as you know, Marvin Superman's like a nice guy. He's not gonna go fucking beat the shit out of this guy. Right. And he gets like visibly pissed and he goes over. He's like about to leave the house. And Lois is like, This isn't a job for Superman. And he's like, Oh, he's not going. And he Ooh. fucking confronts this guy at this diner. Oh, man. And, you know, Clark ain't going to let nobody disrespect his family like that. So he like confronts the guy at the bar and the guy's being the diner. 
And this guy's just being like fucking belligerent and shit and like trying to talk shit to Clark. And Clark's like, hey, listen, why don't we just step outside, talk about it like men. This guy tries to be a tough guy and he pushes Clark. But obviously he's Superman. Of course, he's not going to fucking move. He doesn't even fucking budge. And the guy like bounces back off of him. And he just gets this look on his face like, oh shit, like I picked a fight with the wrong motherfucker. Ah, yeah. oh, it's so good. The show is so good. It's so good. <laughs> oh man. You need to get it. You need to finish it. Yeah. I wish I can get Marvin you, to watch it, but that's not happening. I don't know. I don't nah, have too many episodes I ain't got left. that much time for Superman. To be honest. I understand. I ain't got that much time for Superman. I, I understand. I understand. What were you going to say, Dusty? Uh, I don't have too many episodes left. I just... Yeah. Um, there was a break, I think, or I don't remember. But yeah. yeah, they did a little thing. So, Marvin, interesting. You mentioned uh, the Dark Knight trilogy you were watching pure coincidence i took a screenshot of a tweet that i saw earlier today to talk about it with you guys because it's something we talk about often and uh your boy christopher nolan marvin he doesn't agree with you about long movies oh, uh he he What's said he, got planned? he says there's no problem with long films and he's his quote i've been working in films now for 25 years i've been hearing for all that time how young people's attention spans are getting shorter i don't think it <laughs> to be true at all I presented Universal a 180-page a script. I said the film is going to need to be three hours. The most successful film in America at the time was Avengers Endgame. Three hours and two minutes. If you look at the history of movies, the most successful films tend to be quite long, actually. I think the issue hmm. with length is if you're engaged, if the movie is working for you and you're drawn in, a three-hour running time is completely fine. If you're not liking the movie, a three-hour running time is going to feel very, very long. And yeah, I understand that. I feel like, but I, I would question like, is it necessary for it to, to be three hours still, even if you're engaged, enjoying it, all this? I would say sometimes, yeah, to tell the story properly. Sometimes, no. Most times, no, actually, <laughs> in our experience, <laughs> especially with stuff we watch. The cat's going crazy well, over there. What's going on? Give him some love, Marvin. A three hour if... investment <laughs> is a lot when you're talking about going to the movies. It's it's a gamble. If it's going to be shit, you're yeah. stuck there for three hours or you just wasted all that fucking money. For sure. But I think it's even worse. Give him some love, Marvin. Pet the guy. <laughs> I think it's even worse when you're sitting at home it's watching a annoying. three hour movie because you have so much opportunity to get distracted. At least in a movie, yeah. you're kind of focused, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't think know that I'd want to be stuck in a movie that I hate for three hours. <laughs> well, yeah, you wouldn't want to, but you're there, so you kind of like deal with it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. uh, I thought it was funny because you know we talk about a lot of times like our biggest critique of some of the stuff we watch is that it's fucking long. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. we agree with Christopher Nolan. Where great minds think alike, you know, because we've said the same thing too. Like, hey, listen, if this movie was fucking good be no problem because we've watched long movies and we've all said the same thing like wow i didn't even feel the length at all matter of fact yeah. i think we talked about it with uh eternal sunshine we kind of said something along those lines like it's a slow paced movie but you don't really feel it because it's a great movie yeah so yeah. uh that all that to say uh we're just like christopher nolan just as talented just as good at writing and all that good stuff <laughs> um, not as rich not as rich unfortunately no but yeah. we'll, we'll get there someday <laughs> Go subscribe to the YouTube. <sighs> good, uh, good segue for a pitch. Harshlanguage.tv. Check it out. All our links. Go follow us so we can get rich like Christopher Nolan. That's right. Um, speaking of rich, Marvin, you posted a screenshot in the Discord earlier that I thought was pretty funny. Care to uh, enlighten us a little bit? Yeah. So browsing Twitter for you page as an intellectual would do. Mm hmm. Mm hmm in 2023 and came across this chart showing the DCU since 2013. Basically it's listing out each movie and how much money it made um, in chronological release or right. whatever. I was very and, surprised uh, by this too. If I read it correctly. Started off. Yeah. Starting off strong peaks with Aquaman. Yep. That's... And it all goes to shit for, from there. So Aquaman made more money than Batman V Superman is what you're telling me. You know, it was their only billion dollar movie yeah. and it was their last that surprises su me successful movie if you look like, at it so <laughs> I wonder why that is because Aquaman's not like traditionally 
a popular character outside of the comic book fandom. He's actually more of like a meme. He's been memed fucking. Aquaman seems whack as fuck. I don't know. That, exactly that. my point. He seems he's to 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 the uninitiated non comic book fan. <laughs> he's he's memed to death. Even me, he's I think so he's. Lame. I think and you he's know lame why too. he's so lame yeah? because of SpongeBob. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Explain. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Oh, if shit. you're a SpongeBob fan, oh shit. If you're a SpongeBob fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mermaid Man, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy ruined Aquaman for mm. a lot of my generation. I'm not Hands familiar out. with those characters, so I can't look them up. I, I might have to. But uh, just two super, two old ass superheroes and fucking SpongeBob. <laughs> Does, uh, and they're just a joke. It's just Ed, hilarious. shout out to Ed. Ed will disagree. Shout out. He loves Aquaman, and he tells me all the time. He's like, "Bro, you're wrong about Aquaman. He's fucking dope." What is there to love about Aquaman? He's a fucking underwater, like, (laughs) fucking, like, I don't know. He's talking to Anna. Who cares, really? Eh, I'm sure there's more, but. Yeah, no, for sure. But I think uh, the fact that Jason Momoa was in it really helped. I think the fact that it's not Zack Snyder is what did it, to be perfectly honest with you. (laughs) And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Zack Snyder hater. I'm saying it because how does a movie with the three biggest comic book characters of all Jeez. time arguably not raking in more money than fucking aquaman and <laughs> I, and and i think it has to do and it's not oh my lord <laughs> we have a fourth <laughs> we have a special guest today on the show what's his name again blue 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 everyone blue what do you think about zack snyder meow <laughs> <laughs> he's got nothing to say yeah he's fucking sick of it oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! Just headbutt the shit. It's too yeah, much happening right now. Um, uh, not Zack Snyder personally. It's the fact that those movies are darker, and like a lot of comic book movie fan goers, cinema goers, they voice their opinions. They want the more lighthearted, uh, colorful, uh, fun comic book movies. Not these fucking boring, bland, and depressing comic book movies like Batman v Superman. Right. And I think if you watch the trailer of Aquaman, like it's it, it's that. I don't think the movie's very good, but I think that that could be a reason why it drew in so many audiences, uh, so so much money from audiences. Yeah. What do you think, Dusty? You got a theory? Uh, I mean, why it did so much better? I don't know. <clears throat> I think uh, still a casual audience drawn in. You, you're trying to get your girlfriend to go see a movie. You're like, hey, it's. Jason Momoa is going to be shirtless and wet almost the whole movie. <laughs> you think that's it, huh? You think it's the Momoa diff? Nah. Uh, I don't think it is. Maybe, though. Uh, well, In 2018? Yeah. Probably. Well, yeah, it's no secret that the latest DC movies have been bombing at the box office, Blue Beetle being the latest. So, question I want to ask. And, and the we, lowest. And yeah, the lowest. Latest and the lo- Wait, yeah. Yes, yeah, the lowest. Yeah. We've talked about it before a few times, but is the DCU... The James Gunn DCU, is it already doomed? What do you guys think about that? I don't think it's dead on arrival, no. Um, There's definitely struggling, and there's struggling for a lot of reasons, not just because they've been making mid-movies, but... Yeah, we need need a banger. That's all we need. The world needs Superman now more than ever. DC needs Superman more than ever. Right. And if anybody could pull them back from the fucking... from the brink of, of... fucking failure it's superman and uh <laughs> can james gunn do it i don't know we've again we've been we've been talking about it here almost every week on the show like kind of cracking jokes and talking about how like he's just been he, they've been marketing it pretty badly but oh man this is like this is make or break i think if superman doesn't yes. do well so black adam was their last like <laughs> successful one besides aquaman and that was only like four hundred thousand. they yeah. haven't broke half a mil in a while so but if superman doesn't make a billion dollars I think uh, they might be have reason to be worried. Do you think if if Superman maybe. doesn't do well? Sorry, go ahead, Marvin. I was just gonna say maybe DC is just too top heavy with with their selection of uh, characters. Characters. I don't think so because they as far as like casual moviegoers, maybe. Maybe. I mean, you could say the same thing for Marvel, too, but Marvel had success with Guardians like so? and, like, The Eternals. And, well, The Eternals wasn't that great of a movie, but... I, but 
I feel like I could name more Marvel characters than I can DC characters as a casual. That's uh, fair too. That's fair too. Outside of the comic book. Like, especially because they had X-Men. That's like a, a big, like a big fucking thing too for casual people. I feel like. Yeah, that's fair. But I'm just, I'm looking at like my most popular superheroes right now. It's yeah. like. I think you could say they're a little top heavy when it comes to like general audiences, like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, like beyond that, yeah. like, you know, Flash, I'm yeah. sure people know about Flash, but uh, yeah. yeah, those are certainly the big three, but do you think there's a world where if Superman is a bomb, they pull the plug <laughs> on the DCU and they just say, fuck it? What are they going to do to make money? No. Then? Just go no, back to making can't. Batman movies every three mm. years? Maybe they'll get Nolan to make a Superman trilogy. That would be <laughs> sick. He, yeah, well, he was, he had a hand in Man of Steel, but. He was just oh, a producer. He? he was a producer, yeah. I, oh, okay. I have faith in Gunn's going to deliver some uh, good. Well, movies. I do too, but I don't know. If, but my 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 whole thing is that it has nothing to do with really whether he delivers or not. He can still deliver a great movie, and people won't go see it. Our audience sure. is just are they just done with the DC at this point? Like it, it's where every movie is just not that great. You after a certain amount of time, people are probably like, oh, this is a DC movie. Yeah, fuck that. The only, like, they're really banking on the James Gunn name recognition, like, because you know the first thing that's going to flash on the trailer for the movie is from the creator of Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, that's for <laughs> sure going to be on the, like, that's, oh, yeah. right. that's what they're banking sure. on. Mm -hmm. Yes. From the, from, uh, from the, uh, <laughs> from the, from the mind of the creator of Peacemaker and the Guardians of the Galaxy. I wonder if they, maybe <laughs> they won't even put the Guardians on there because it's all, like, a warring IP? Nah, they would. There's no way they don't do they that. They probably would. Yeah. Maybe maybe DC or WB should just go back to, like, fucking Bugs Bunny and shit. <laughs> Bring back Tom and Jerry and let's yeah. get some classics Yo, back. Yo, Tom and Jerry was a fucking banger. That was my favorite show as a kid. I love Tom and Jerry. So like funny. fucking Roadrunner, Wile E. Coyote. Pinky in the Brain. Marv the Martian, of course. Oh, Animaniacs. Mm. That had a resurgence, like, last oh, couple yeah. of years. Um, I mean, WB has a lot of the classic oh, yeah. cartoons. Yep, sure and do. Of course, they got the comics too. But yeah, they're not managing all their IP very well. But right. Zazzle Dude, they could do a live action Jetsons, and that might be fire. Oh, that would, yeah, Ooh, would. <laughs> live action Jetsons. <laughs> Hey, I'm just what? saying it, we're we're in that we're in that we're, like tech <clears throat> tech phase with movies is like a big thing with the AI and shit. Past the date, I think recently where George Jetson was actually born, I want to say. Wanna yeah, say that happened recently. <laughs> That's right? funny. Speaking of, uh, uh -huh. well, yeah, just to wrap up that little fucking thing, is the DCU doomed? Uh, it's hard to say. Nah. I'm never. You're never doomed when you got. I'm holding out hope. Billions of dollars. No, that's fair. Yeah. Well, they, they still got some billion dollar I items in the they're hemorrhaging. thing and bring it. Like but you said, they need to is. do the Mr. Freeze, the Mr. Freeze movie. Hey, he's a great villain. Or something like I don't know, man. He's a great they got villain. got so much shit, but like Dusty said, they're not managing yeah. everything well. They're focusing there's just... Well, I mean, listen, it could be said that Disney's not managing their IPs well either because they just fucking announced that's that they're, true. they're fucking just putting I feel everything like WB on. WB has yeah, I feel like WB has so much shit, though. They don't even need the universe. They could just do all types of random movies that would probably do well that aren't even connected at all. Did you guys happen to watch the video that I sent you earlier today? It's like seven minutes. It's about um, comic book interconnectivity. Mm -mm. Oh, no. I didn't get to see it. Uh, essentially, the video, long story short, talks about how like interconnectivity is like a staple of comic books, which we've talked about. Like, yeah. Know, and and then they have the crossover event where everything comes together. But he was saying that, like, um, built into that interconnectivity intrinsically comes a time when you have to do a soft reboot of everything. Because um, basically what happens is everything starts to, like, you have to top the last thing. So, like, you right, know. And it's you unsustainable. It's unsustainable. So, if, you know, it's like he, he says, like, oh, it's like a building is in danger, then a town, then a city, then a fucking country, and then the, the fucking galaxy. world, the galaxy, the multiverse. <laughs> and eventually it reaches a point Sacred of blow timeline. where it has to be rebooted. And, you know, Dusty thinks we might be heading in that direction with the MCU. I think there's still a little bit of time before that. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting. But I think that interconnectivity is what sells. And it's what made Marvel so good for so long is that, yeah, you were going to watch movies that were like, oh, this is a Captain America movie. But like, you know that there's a little bit of 
there's a little bit of it that's going to have be important down the road. And DC hasn't really successfully done that, or the, the WB hasn't su- successfully done that with their movies yet. They gave us Superman and then immediately fucking jumped into the team up movie, and it just doesn't hit the same. So, you know, right. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, the great reset is upon us. They could do it. I mean, Marvel had like a lot of good movies before we got into the whole multiverse thing, right? Because that was like what? For sure. Yeah. Doctor Strange or something. Well, the thing is, WBC is like the billion. They just have dollar signs in their eyes, like yeah, a fucking cartoon a problem, character. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we need the we need the Justice League to make that kind of money. But a kind <laughs> of like like. The Avengers wouldn't have been as successful if they just gave us an Avengers movie and you don't have any of like the previous stuff backing it up. I don't think anyway. I feel like the thing is if people are fatigued on comic book movies mm-hmm. because they not only are they not great, but maybe because they have to watch so much stuff to keep up with everything. Well, maybe the answer is to go back to non-connected standalone shit. And that's another point the guy makes in that video is that like... Yes, so giving people homework, as we've talked about, with shows and stuff like that, like, yeah. it's fine for comic book fans because we're already, like, attuned to that. Yeah. But for general audiences, it's not. You can't expect them to watch a show like like Secret Invasion, for instance, a show that's not even good, <laughs> just to understand the next movie that's coming out. Like, that, that's, right. you, that's you, terrible. You, you can't be doing that. And that is also yeah. not sustainable. So yeah, yeah, we'll see. I mean, we'll unless see. unless you're building an anthology of movies to tell one story, like the End Game, yeah, you, they don't all need to be interconnected all the time. That's why I said like they need yeah. to reboot Iron Man. People know Iron Man. People want Iron Man, but they can't do it because everything's still interconnected, and you can't always say, "Right, here's Tony. Right. Pretend he didn't <laughs> die." Yeah, yeah, that's true. And that's yeah. where you know yeah. the multiverse comes into play. If you need a reboot, mm-hmm. make a multiverse story. That's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so you said you, uh, back to watching stuff, you said you watched Ninja Turtles? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. I heard, I've heard really good things about it. I'm nice. excited to watch it. Yeah, good, good things too. Yeah. We're going to watch that for, some, for next week. We're all in agreement on that. Next week, next week. yeah, I'll cool. watch it again. Sure. Marvin, have you seen the movies from the 90s? Probably not. Okay. Because I grew Probably up, like, not. those two movies are, like, so near and dear to my heart. Ninja Turtles in general is, I used to watch the cartoons. I, I love those fucking movies. I used to watch them on repeat. So I'm Lots really excited for this one. Oh, I bet. I'm really excited. Uh, so speaking of Twitter, Marvin, <laughs> well, you mentioned Twitter. Have you guys seen, I don't really want to get into it too much, but did you guys see all, like, the drama surrounding Starfield that's on Twitter the last couple of days? Nope. Mm-mm. Actually, I haven't been on Twitter that much. Some what fat, kind of drama? some fat, bald and ugly gamer made a video. Oh, I did see that. <laughs> like with an underbite, screaming, <laughs> like actually screaming. That guy is such a loser. About the fact that there's like, a, in the character customization of Starfield, there is a like choose your gender option, and he just like went off the rails about it, and it started like this whole argument. But it's got it's spread around like Hassan's talk, like everybody's talking about it. And I just think it's so stupid. It's like, you've been able to create your character ambiguously in RPGs since, like, forever ago. Why is it now just a problem? And he's like, why why is it a problem? I I don't know why it's a problem. This guy's saying it's a problem. The guy with the underbite is like, oh, you're breaking my immersion. I just want a fun game, but you're forcing gender down my throat and pronouns and yada, yada, yada. And it's just like, (laughs) like, bro, what? Like, get a fucking life, man. Go touch some grass. Is there, is there like a thousand different genders to choose from? or No, it's literally you just choose your pronouns while you're doing the character customization. Do you want to be called he, him, or she, her? I think is what it is. Oh, or it's they, choose them. your pronouns. Or they, them, yeah. Gender. It's choose right. your so, pronouns yeah. during the character customization. Right. And people are like jumping through hoops to be like, oh, why is can't that they? that in addition to the choose your sex, like male or female? Or uh, is it I don't in think place they... of? No, I don't think that. No, I think the sex is like just choosing like features yeah, and what you structure look like. of the face and right. the body. Yeah. Mm. But the, I don't know why it's such a big deal. It takes five seconds, I imagine, to click the fucking it's button. It's just not even five seconds. It's probably like two seconds. The thought processes <laughs> in your brain and then you click it. It's like, who fucking cares? It's just literally, these people don't believe what they're spouting out. They're just trying to get fucking interactions and clicks. 
Well, the I re- just don't believe it. Well, so yeah, it's no. just all horse shit. That's true. That's very true. But the reason I specifically brought it up is because Dr. Disrespect has gotten woven into this drama. Because that shit was funny. Because he was so pissed. Yeah, because Doc <laughs> and, and Marvin and I, I don't know about Good Duffy. for him. Good for, shout out to the Doc. <laughs> no, we've all liked the Doc, but I'm I think I'm a little over his nah, stick at I'm this over point. Him, bro. Yeah. Because someone said someone said they don't know if it's like the bl- the lines are blurring between him and his character, and it's like that's so true. Like, well, the lines are gone mean, now at this point. I at think. this point, it's, yeah. it's, it's always been that way. He's no, recording but, people in a no. bathroom. Well, well a couple yes, years thank ago. you. I yes, mean, exactly. On. Yes, he has done some stuff throughout his popularity for the last couple of years that I've, we've given him passes on. Like, ah, eh, okay, he was just trying to do something funny. It was stupid, but whatever. But now I think the real him is starting to come out, oh, and yeah. like. Basically, Dusty, if you're not aware of what happened, he reached out to Bethesda to try to get the game to play it early, like every other streamer. And they denied him. And apparently it was based off of his previous controversies that they didn't want (laughs) to allow it. So then on stream, Doc was reading the Twitter bio of like, I don't know, somebody from Bethesda, probably the community manager or some shit. And As he's reading the bio, he goes, oh, he, him. Now it makes sense. Meaning that this guy's in support of pronouns, so they didn't... It's just the dumbest thing. So now, like, Doc is embroiled in this, and he's getting called out by people, and then he's making follow-up tweets, being like, they took my fucking thing out of context, and blah, 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 blah. And Doc is like, politics shouldn't be involved in video games, period. And it's like, bro... Have you never played Bioshock? Have you never played Metal Gear? Have you never played literally fucking almost any game? Like I love the response to that, and it's just a screenshot of Pokemon when it's like, <laughs> "Are you a boy or are you a girl?" Right. It's like this yeah. shit. It's not very. It's not a new thing in games. No, but like, I love that people because okay, it's a clear disagreement with like like pronouns and gender in general. In my opinion, these people just don't agree with that. Okay. That's the source of it. I don't believe in that. Yeah, thing. but to it's then to then recoil into not having a defense and being like, well, I just think politics shouldn't be in video games. It's the dumbest fucking argument I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, it sounds pretty dumb. It's just such a blanket thing to just but, try to detract from y- you having to deal with criticism. I don't think politics should be in games, period. So what? Politics should just never be just addressed and talked about. Play fucking columns on the Sega, or I don't know what, yeah. what you want to play. Play Pong, Sonic. bro. What should politics be? Even there's <laughs> politics in Sonic, probably if you look hard enough. <laughs> That's Ace, true. Ace Combat. Underlying, underlying yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, what do you Dr. mean, bro? Robotnik You're playing is Call the of Fucking Oppressor. Yeah, you you made your fucking career <laughs> playing Call of Duty. You don't think that's a political fucking game? It's a game about American exceptionalism and about fucking just Dude. war in general. Like, what are you talking about? I can't believe that's the hill that the, all those Call of Duty streamer creators died on with the Call of Duty thing. That yeah. was so fucking <clears throat> stupid. And mm-hmm. it was funny to watch unfold. It's like, it's like you already kind of knew that it's these like, are the type of people that these people are, though. And then they say, like, oh, I don't want this. Like, you're forcing this down my throat. But it's like, no, that nobody's forcing anything down your throat. They're being inclusive to other people who care about what their pronouns are. That doesn't affect you in any way because it's the click of a fucking button for two seconds. That's it. You just don't like that you're like, you know, I, I responded to Doc's tweet. I don't think politics should be in video games, period. And I were I responded equals. Unless it de- unless it agrees with my <laughs> shitty world. I mean, because exactly. that's what it is. Exactly. Yeah. Is this like something that's on their name tag in addition to no. like their clan you tag and their username? Appa- okay. So no. I don't Apparently you just selected and that's it. Yeah, it's just the dumbest. Okay. I haven't played it myself, but that was my understanding. But yeah, I mean, unfortunately. They, they just can't they say it's being forced upon them or whatever, but they, they're the ones that just can't uh separate that political right. whatever from the game. And like th- just because it says that it doesn't mean you have to place that emphasis upon the game too. And they're the ones being manipulated into believing that gender is political in any way, shape, or form. (laughs) Yeah. It's only political because a certain party has made it political because they don't have anything of sub... Well, actually, both parties have done it. They've made it political because they don't have anything else of substance to to run on. They don't have any type of, like, 
uh, uh, well, you know, the divisive topics are the easy topics for politicians because they because know they divide. It's they do exactly us, that. This versus them. Right. Exactly. Like, That's true. How where do you, you stand deal on guns? Where do you stand on the death penalty? Where right. do you stand on abortion? <laughs> well, fuck you if you're not on my side. <laughs> exactly. They create a team sport over it and make yeah. things political. Gender has existed forever, and it was never fucking a big deal until like four years ago when politicians yeah. made it a big deal so it's not even a political topic it's just been made political recently and you're buying into it it's so fucking stupid like i can't believe how stupid people are and like uh, i'm just constantly blown away it's like to to sit there and be like well gender has never been a thing it's like what <laughs> are you not familiar with david bowie or like any <laughs> of like other big figures that <laughs> were like Prince. gender fluid and like you know, it's yeah. just well, you know, it's yeah. I mean, it it's political because it is also legislative. I mean, to an extent, like gender. Well, yes. and back in the day, gender was sex is male or female, and so right. when you're doing documents and stuff with the government, you, you know, and people want me, people want people people want the government to add more options. Well, right. How many options do you add? And that's why shit gets political and well, gets crazy and divisive. It's political because it's become part of like policy right there are people trying to write yes. policy that take people's rights away and vice versa or yeah mm -hmm. but but those are only policies because they don't have they don't want to they don't have any other policies that like actually help people they don't want to talk about health care they want to talk about what bathrooms people should use it's it's and the right. fact that people buy into this shit is dumb so like mm -hmm. when people are like oh how do you feel about like uh trans people in sports. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I just want health care. I think that's important. I don't give a fuck who uses what bathroom. <laughs> like, I really don't. So, yeah. Anyway, sorry to go off on that rant. We usually don't get political here on the show, but I thought it was funny because, you know, we all thought Doc was funny at some at one point. But as I said, I think his shtick has sort of run its course at this point. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Well, his, his character is toxic. He's doing yeah, exactly but, what he's supposed to be doing. But it's starting to I come said, out that it's, for him. that it's not just a character at this point, you know? Oh, I see. That's yeah. what that's what I think. But uh mm. but yeah. So that's my piece of news, Dusty. What about you? What kind of news you got for us today? <laughs> well, we're kicking off the nineteenth week of the strike. Going strong. It was like a, like hundred and thirty three days or something like that. I think I did the math earlier. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No progress being um, made. Um <laughs> nope, no. Um, in a, somebody released a video on over Labor Day weekend saying, "Oh yeah, they're turmoiling with themselves. Uh, we're they, it was from the WGA. They're like, we're standing strong. So I don't know. Uh, WB had did an SEC filing that reduced its estimated earnings. Right. Uh, and they stated part of it was stating the continued strikes will cost them around three to five hundred million. Mm. Um, so there are reduced earnings are now 10.5 to 11 billion is what they're estimated for 2023. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah. That's not good. Uh, Bill Maher, <laughs> did you hear, did you see his comments about the, the strike? He, he, um, made some comments and served the pot. He said, uh, some of their <clears throat> demands are kooky. Or something like that. I think he said, he said I said they're did striking that, against yeah. they're striking against the streamers who are looking for a get out of jail card on how much they overspend. They have tons of stuff in stock, so they have no reason to want to settle the strike. They struck at just the wrong time. They have no leverage. Um, hmm. Which I don't know that I necessarily hmm. agree with him on that because studios have canceled like a few hundred shows this year. Like we've reported on dozens of cancellations. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so uh, definitely the studios realize they've overspent and they're cutting back and the strike is kind of helping that, but they're also losing content and like the WB SEC filing, they're like going to lose three to 500 million over this shit just this year is what they're projected to do. So yeah, I saw a tweet. I don't know. Um, someone was saying, you know, they're, they were pointing out how much they're going to lose and saying like, if they would just give them what they want, it would be like 47 million or something as far mm. as like uh i think it was like i i wish i could find a tweet right some of the yeah some of the demands being met yeah mm. yeah i don't know but i uh, mean it could all be over so quickly and it wouldn't even affect them i mean you know 
you look at something like Taylor Swift is doing. I'm not a big Swifty or nothing like that. I like some of her songs. She's fucking <laughs> giving her crew people bonuses of $100,000 each. Like, she's, right. she's spending, like, some insane number of money. Well, that's because she's managing everything herself. I know. Which you can't but the, do but, in a well, no, the point I'm trying to make studio thing. Was... No, no, the point I'm just trying to make is that she's, she's fair. She's, she's treating her employees more than fair. Oh, absolutely. And, yes. and, and not even making a dent in her pocket. Right. So it's like, everybody could do it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, just, <laughs> you're just greedy enough. Yep. I'm about to go work for Taylor Swift, bro. Get me that bonus. <laughs> Give me that stimmy, that T-Swift stimmy. You know what I'm saying? New car, yeah. Hell yeah. Going to an Oprah show. Um, all right. Well, uh, Equalizer 3 came out this mm -hmm. Labor Day weekend. And yep. um, record-breaking opening weekend helped push domestic summer revenue past the $4 billion mark. For the first time in the post-pandemic era, so yeah, summer summer me, box office made four billion dollars. This not this movie, summer, just wow. total total summer box office okay, revenue yeah, yeah, yeah. was four billion dollars, and it's the first time since the okay. pandemic happened. So people are starting to get back out to the movies. So you know, and Equalizer companies. helped push it over the top. Yeah, it it had uh, what was it forty. Two billion, I okay. think it made forty-three or a million. Forty-three million is what it made, and it's uh, the second largest uh, Labor Day opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, forty-two point three million. Uh, behind, you'll never guess what the largest Labor Day opening weekend movie is. Uh, Marvel's Shang Chi and the oh, Legend okay. of the Ten Rings. Ever? Uh, yeah, ninety-four point okay. seven million over a four-day Labor Day weekend. I yeah. could have guessed huh. it as a Marvel movie, but I didn't know which one opened. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, there was really a whole lot, you know, usually the Labor Day yeah. is held by other stuff, but tentpole movies don't I really wanna, show up there. I want to see Equalizer. I, I have a couple of friends that, like, really despise the first two. I thought they're good. The second one's not as good as the first one, but I think they're good movies. And I like Antoine Fuqua for the most part. Some of his stuff is a little bit like, eh, but yeah. Yeah, I think he's pretty good. I think for the most part, he's, like, a pretty good director. I like a lot of his movies. Yeah, yeah I haven't... I didn't. I forgot that... uh Equalizer 3 was coming out. Yeah. yeah. It just came out. Almost went and saw it. Um, but that, uh, so they made $4.087 billion. That's a 19% uptick over 2022, but still behind the 2019 19%. by 6%. Yeah, 19% uptick from 2022, but 2019, pre-pandemic, it still trails still by high. 6%. So they made a little more money pre-pandemic. Okay. Um, and then Barbie uh, beat... The Harry Potter, the final Harry Potter film as the top grossing movie in WB history. Mm. So they had oh. an IP they didn't even know they had. Nobody thought that was going to be a billion dollar movie, but see, that's, uh, what that's I'm not, a, not, not adjusted for inflation, by the way. So it's probably <laughs> still pretty close, but hey, and also surpassed Mario Brothers as the biggest film of the year. They're at $1.38 billion. So almost went and saw Dang. that one too. Margot Robbie and Greta Gerwig knew they knew that yep. shit was going to be a smash. <clears throat> Actually, went Barbie. and saw. The Sound of Freedom instead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Which was, yeah. Well, I mean, it was a double date <laughs> movie, and we were we were arguing over what to see, and there wasn't really a whole lot. Like, some of them didn't want to watch Equalizer, some of them didn't want to watch Barbie, some of, you know. So we all just settled on The Sound of Freedom, which was, it's a that's a sad, depressing movie. It's good, but it's just Don't sad. care about it. It's propaganda bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so um, more WB news. David Zaslav formally announced that Mark Thompson will be taking over things at CNN. Hmm. Maybe they'll turn the ship around. I don't know. Uh, he's former New York Times chief and BBC, I think, general manager or something like that. Maybe we'll uh, start he, getting real news again from our networks. He, Probably not. He, he's taken over the reins from Chris Litched. Uh, who was only on the job for about 13 months, and he did a lot of weird shit. Like, he canceled the CNN Plus immediately. He pushed out uh, Stelter and uh, Tubin and a couple other guys, I think. And hmm. um, then he put Don Lemon on a morning show that had to fire him because he wasn't getting along with the co-hosts. Hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, Jeff Zucker, Jeff Zucker was the previous one, and he ran that in the crown. He had had it for about 10, 15 years. So we'll see. Who knows? Hmm. media content maybe they'll report the news maybe not maybe someday yeah. they'll reinstate the fairness doctrine that'd be kind of cool maybe you familiar with that marvin mm -mm. yeah there was a law made in 1949 that meant that 
broadcast people who had broadcast licenses, so like media networks, they had to present controversial issues of public importance mm -hmm. uh, in a fair manner, reflecting both sides of the argument. And oh, they sure. also had to report the news. Um, but unfortunately, uh, it was uh, removed by uh, the guy who's pretty much responsible for ruining this country and creating uh, unfettered capitalism here, which is uh, Mr. Ronald Reagan, I believe, is the guy who revoked it. Um, but yeah. Mm. Anyhow. Yeah. More you know. Uh, <clears throat> Giancarlo Esposito is at Comic Con Panama. Juan. Juan Carlo. Yeah. Sure. Jean. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you said? <laughs> he said yeah. Jean. Jean. Oh, okay. Giancarlo Esposito. He hit him with Jean. the. He hit him with uh, the. At least it wasn't the, John. The French. No. Yeah. John and Dutton. He oh, said yeah. he's been talking with James Gunn about appearing in a DC movie and uh, finished off with who knows it could happen soon. Yeah. So, Gun's bringing in some names. That'd be Seems cool. Seems like. We'll see. Who knows? Yeah. I want him to be Professor X, bro. So bad. Uh, He'd be such see. a good Xavier. Gonna have him. Maybe. Um, all right. Going back. Oh, wait, we're over to Disney. But going back, uh, they're in a, uh, a battle with Charter Spectrum. Have you guys heard about this? No. Uh, so Charter Spectrum, they do internet and TV and phone oh, and right. stuff like that. They're an mm -hmm. internet company. Right. Uh, they've been in a battle with Disney for about five days because of carriage terms, and it's left about 15 people <clears> without access to 18 Disney networks, including ABC and I think eight ABC stations. Uh oh. Um, this is about affiliate fees, and this accounts for, <clears throat> get this, affiliate fees count for about 20 to 47% of total revenue for these media giants, right? Mm -hmm. So, like Warner Brothers, you know, through the strike, they're like, well, we're going to lose three to 500 million, but we're still going to make 11 billion. Right. So yeah. Charter Spectrum estimated its 2023 carriage right fees would be around $2.2 billion to Disney. Right. So that's paying them. This is, for they, they, they're paying the Disney content. They're, they're paying Disney access for the content and the fees are like, how much, how many times you air it, how many times it's viewed, stuff like that. I don't yeah. know. I don't know how all the uh, the affiliate fees or the carriage rights works out, but um, sure, yeah. Uh, CEO Chris, it's crazy uh, that it's gotten to be that much for them to yeah. pay. I wonder what it was like. Well, and this is where ago. the talk <laughs> is like why the satellite and cable subscription model is fucking dying is because uh, these media companies are limiting the content these guys get saying our good stuff is exclusive on our, you know, right, direct so to customer fuck. software. <laughs> and so fuck these guys. And so people are losing by the dozens and this whole fucking infrastructure is about to fucking collapse. Meanwhile, these companies have been overspending on making all these fucking content online that people yeah. aren't watching that they're fucking, you know, now they're just canceling so shows and canceling movies. Disney, like Disney plus gets fucking the good Marvel shit. And then, Cable users get fucking Wizards of Waverly Place or whatever the <laughs> fuck is playing well, on yeah. Disney. It's actually less That's about so fucked. It's actually less about that. It's probably more prominent with like networks that cover sports and stuff. Because well, yeah, live sports oh, is shit. the big one. That's yeah. like the big one. Like because everybody else they can get their content anywhere they want. But live, basically, live sports They're or uh, reality. I mean, network. not reality TV, but game shows and yeah. daytime television. There's a lot of that bullshit. But right. Yeah, sports is the big one. Mm -hmm. Which I think, when we were talking about Zaslav trying to sell everything, he doesn't want to offload ESPN. Or no, no, that's uh, not Zaslav. That's um, Iger. Bob Iger, uh, From yeah. Disney. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he wants to Damn. find a partner for ESPN because uh, th that's another one. Like, uh, So it was Chris Renfi, the CEO. He was on a conference call with investors. He says, this is not a typical carriage dispute. This is the current video ecosystem is broken. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody's yeah, been I talking can't. about. Like the way that they've done it and everybody's losing money right now and they can't figure it out and it's just broken. So <laughs> we're heading for a reset right now. That's going to be wild. I can't imagine that uh, the uh, carriers or like the charter spectrum or whatever accounted for them putting like shows because you know like i'm sure they accounted for like oh yeah you know movies 
Yeah. They'll mm-hmm. have movies in theaters and the movies may not ever or if you know yeah. not for a long we can time pay come for them the they come to us yeah eventually but so many shows ads. they're missing yep. out on mm-hmm. that are exclusive to the, the everybody's these going streamers. direct to customer and they're fighting over it and well, it's this, killing what a shitty business model anyway but i mean i, I understand yeah, it, it but it's like <laughs> this is uh, right in line with the strike too it's all about the same stuff it's part of mm-hmm. the streamer wars because yep. aaron mm-hmm. paul made some news recently during the strike mm-hmm. because he said that he quoted I don't get a piece from Netflix on Breaking Bad. Which is crazy. To be totally honest, and that's insane to me. So, like, he said, shows live forever on these streamers and it goes through waves. And I just saw the other day that Breaking Bad was trending on Netflix and it's just such common sense. And a lot of these streamers, they know they've been getting away with not paying people just fair wage. And now it's time to pony up. And it's all the same thing. Like, this streamer model is like, it's broken, as Dusty just said, or quoted. And it's all crumbling and like, we're going to, we are heading for like a reset of like media and how we, you know. Yeah. I mean, enjoy if, the, if, if Charter and Disney can't come to terms, Disney is going to lose out on 2.2 billion a year. And if, uh, I mean, if the other cable and satellite companies collapse and do the same thing, you're talking about, you know, 25 to 50% of your $11 billion is fucking gone, completely mm-hmm. gone now. So yep. good luck. I mean, well, Disney's so, a shitty company, shit. so they deserve. I it. mean, but it's with all of them. It's no, it's I know. WB, it's Disney, it's Paramount. Yeah, I know. I get it. They need to be so, toppled. Yeah. Anyhow. Uh, but honestly, did... these fucking cable companies are not any fucking. They're not innocent either, because oh, absolutely not. They package all their fucking shit into one thing. So if you Cox if you and Comcast, yeah, if you want internet, you need Spectrum. the fucking TV service. If you get the TV service, you have to have the phone service. Next thing you know, you're paying two hundred and thirty dollars a month, and your internet fucking oh, sucks yeah. and cuts out every two days, like fucking Cox. Yeah, fuck them too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. every company. Fuck companies. Fuck capitalism. Fuck billionaires. Uh, it's all bullshit. Mm. Be a communist, just like me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, stream, streaming uh, wouldn't like be much of a thing if people weren't expecting to get so much for so little. I feel like if people like before, you like you had to buy like you know you had a box set of these this show, mm-hmm. or a box set of this show. Mm-hmm. But people well, don't you can't, want to spend that much money on content either. Well, you can't like. do you can't even do that with like a Netflix show. I said this my my buddy yeah, George and I were talking true. too. It's like I would buy a box set of. Stranger Things, let's just say, in an instant to have it, but right. you can't. You could only watch but it on can't. their network on on Netflix. Yep. Yeah. So they like, rather have. Obviously, they'd rather have that. I wonder what their like average customer retention, 20, thirty years know. or something, twenty years. They're planning, you know. Yeah. Who knows? They'd rather have that than the one time payment for sure. Right. Yep. Either way, the consumer always gets fucked in the end. Mm. Yep. Yes. Uh, Disney shared a few uh, Soka numbers with us. I guess they had 14 million views in the first five days, which a view is mm. not necessarily a view. They use the same metric <laughs> as, uh, speaking of, Netflix does. A view is not a view, uh, but it's a view. A view is dividing <laughs> the total viewing time by the run time. So Ahsoka was 56 minutes long. 14 million views is 784 minutes of viewing is how they do the math. That, that, uh, that sounds like so it's not actually thing. That's it's not so actually sweet. one view to one view like if i watched ahsoka three times you mm-hmm. know they would count that but that's why i said a couple of weeks ago about netflix these metrics are all created to inf- to artificially yep. inflate their numbers for their investors oh, yeah. so yep. like netflix for instance netflix would love for you to believe that stranger things is the most watched thing on netflix but it's not. There's no way it is. It's for sure <laughs> Seinfeld or Breaking Bad or some of these other shows. That's why most people have Netflix, not for their original content. But they need an excuse in order to get fucking funding to make these original content things. And it's like, it's so fucking fake. Yeah. Actually, apparently Wednesday is the most watched show of yeah. all time. Oh, I guarantee you it's not. Insane. There's no way that Wednesday. Makes no sense. <laughs> Wednesday was great, but there's no way I'm more sure people are was, watching Wednesday than Seinfeld. I haven't even watched it. I'm only one person. Well, but. Yeah, that's one thing Bill Maher was saying, where he was like kind of agreeing because he was shitting on the strikers a little bit, but he also shit on the corporations too. He's like, you know, the sharing of the information about like views and you know, streamers 
sharing the content or, you know, sharing the data about the content so that they, mm -hmm. everybody can get paid evenly. Yeah. And all That's this is true. really dumb because once again, it doesn't matter to you guys and me. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we get affected by is like, oh, well, my bill went up fucking another $10 <laughs> a month or whatever the yep. fuck. Yep. Yeah. Well, and we also get They're affected by the, the books. following. Marvel They're delays. They're cooking the books. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we have a new set of delays announced. Echo. Um, it was coming out in November 2023. It is now being pushed to January 2024. Delay them up. Make the shit better. Agatha Darkhold Diaries, previously Coven of Chaos, uh, is now winter 2023 to fall 2024. There's actually three titles. Damn. That's a big yeah. fucking difference. Yeah. Yeah, uh, X Men '97. Unfortunately, it was fall 2023. It's been bumped to early 2024. Good, bump it. What uh, was that? But X Men '97, oh, the anime. But season Damn. two is still in the works, and animated stuff is not being affected by the strikes. So, bump really? everything. Give it the bump. They're still bumping it. Um, so Loki will be the only Marvel fall release. Season two. Oh, yeah. that's just probably um, done already. That's why they're not bumping it. Yeah. And, well, in October uh, six is when that comes out. Um, yeah. And then what if was slated for winter 2023 bump it um, is so, yeah. And then iron iron heart has been removed entirely. It's a to be determined. Oh shit. Let's it's go baby. Schedule anymore. Let's go. Feige's so fucking laying down the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah. Damn. They do have the marvels coming up. And I, yeah. I don't know you guys. I don't know if you watched that teaser trailer. It's about two minutes. It's a quick little recap of all the. Uh, I didn't. No, I did watch the Chicken Run teaser trailer. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's this is gonna be sick. This Tweety. I never watched Tw Chicken Run, the first one. Oh my god, it's so <sighs> good. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> it actually is really good. That's mm -hmm. fair. Okay, well, that's maybe a little I'll bit of nostalgia it. bias, but it is definitely good. Maybe I'll have to watch it. I don't even know if I. Maybe I've seen it, and I don't even remember. I don't know. <laughs> what else you got for us, Dusty? Uh, my time to shine. Hello, mm -hmm. is oh scoop. shit! What do you give Hulk us? Season two is happening. <sighs> no, no, no. That's what we don't care about. <laughs> yeah, we don't seriously. care about that. Hell no. Yeah. Well, when the strikes are done, it's happening. We're not going to get anything happening for a long time. That's another yeah. thing that Good. we get. Good. Not, nothing's Just happening. Put that one on the bottom of the list. Yeah. Whenever everything else comes out, then you could think about. Focus on Sorry, Silver no. Surfer. Don't give me fucking no. Yeah. She Hulk. Season two of I'm Groot comes out today on Disney Plus, September 6th. Well, this is the fifth, but it's probably the sixth for you, right? Yeah, they've marketed That's it. That's the really shorts. Well. The little That's mini. That's the shorts. Yeah. yeah. I need to watch those yeah. still. I mean, it seems great, but I just haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Josh Wiling did an interview with the series director, <laughs> Kirsten Lepore. She said she would love to do a season three and even love to see a feature film. Did you watch the season one, Dan? No, no James Gunn no. humor in it. I don't care. Uh, uh, they're all right. I mean, it's, it's what it's Groot, baby Groot between, you know, the two yeah. Guardians movies. All right. But, uh, I don't know about a feature film. I think that's a little. No, nah, that's um, a reach. Stay, that's stay a reach, in your but fucking keep the animation shorts. Short I like queen. them. Yeah. They're, they're fun little, little shorts. Your uh, animation and not everything shorts. Needs a, <laughs> not everything needs a fucking feature film. Nope. Mm -hmm. And not everything needs a show. That's the not thing. A, Ag Agatha right. looking at you. Yeah, yeah. I ain't watching Ag that shit. <laughs> that. You gotta have to, uh, You gotta do that homework. <laughs> yeah. All oh, right. For well, the next fucking movie. Mm -hmm. We did get an update on Yellowstone uh, unofficially. Um, oh, at his Costner, divorce hearing. <laughs> Kevin Costner was in divorce court. Yeah, it's, he was uh, reported as saying it's a little disappointing that it's the number one show on television, and I'm not participating. I'll probably go to court over it. Um, Damn. He, he claims he still owed $12 million for the second half of the season, and Paramount walked away from negotiations. Still hasn't yet been filmed, so I don't know. You, so what's he owed for? If it hasn't been filmed, it might not come out. Yeah, and a lot of it is also like, I don't know, he wanted to do his four-part movie miniseries that he just did. I forget what it's called, but he just... He started mm. doing the first part before the strike happened. But um, Sheridan yeah. was recently on the cover of, I think, Hollywood Reporter. They did an expose on him, and he got to talk about it a little bit. He said um, he and the network were arguing about when he could be done with Yellowstone. I, um, I said we can certainly work his schedule toward his preferred exit date, which we did. Um, but, it, you know, it didn't work out. So they walked wow. away. I mean, I don't know. 
Harrison Damn. Ford. I'm gonna be honest. Kevin Costner, you're watch. rich enough. You're rich enough now. Do you, do you really need to twelve million dollars up front, or is it just really about you not wanting to film? Because it's also about <laughs> he was supposed to film sixty five days, and then he was only supposed to film fifty days, and he has other projects. So yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know if I could watch Yellowstone without John Dutton. I think I'm yeah, just kind well, of done with the show. Not especially not with if I know like the backstory of his exit. Like if they would have killed him off properly or something, I like could Taylor probably keep watching it. But did say that it doesn't alter his character at all, but it will truncate his exit a little bit. So I mean, they could just say like, I don't like that. I don't like. That. No, they could just say he's off doing fucking governor shit. Like I don't know. It, that, that no, last... I think they'll, they'll truncate. Yeah, he said it doesn't alter the character at all, but it does truncate his story. Well, listen, don't care really that much, to be honest. That last fucking, <laughs> that first half of the last season just put a fucking bad, bad flavor in my mouth. I did not think that the season was that strong. We mm. were both, all of us were like hoping that it would pick up at the second half, but apparently that's not going to fucking happen. So, right. So, yeah, we got the strike. So yeah, it's not... we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, and uh, I guess the last bit of news here, The Killer. We talked about it last week, David Fincher's neo-noir assassin oh, yeah. thriller. Yep, yep. Uh, apparently got a standing ovation at the Venice Film Festival. Ooh, Alec, that's big. Alex Redman tweeted it out of everybody standing around. Of course, David Fincher was in the audience, and so they were all standing to ovate him. And of course they're going to. It's his movie, and he's in the audience. But yeah. it's good, good to know that... Uh, you know, Keep in mind, though, it's David the Fincher. The pretentious assholes that were at the Venice Film Festival love the movie. Yeah, I was going to say, is that big? I don't know if that is big. Them motherfuckers don't know left from right. It's going to be good. It's a David Fincher movie. There's like 0% yeah. chance it's bad. So, I promise yeah, you. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Oh, he did Gone Girl. Oh, yeah. yeah. Marvin, you might, wait, wait, wait. wait. You're going to tell me you've never seen David Fincher movie? Oh, you've seen Gone Girl. Okay. Whew. I've I, seen Gone Girl. I've seen Seven. I've seen Fight Club. Okay, so you're a David Fincher fan. I haven't seen The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh, that one's good. The original's Zodiac. better. Zodiac, I've seen Zodiac. Zodiac is fucking amazing. Zodiac is yeah. one of the best movies ever. I is haven't the, watched The Dragon Tattoo Is that the one about the murders either, in actually. North Carolina or whatever? Or is that something different? No, California. The Zodiac Killer. He was a oh. prominent serial killer back in the 70s. What am I of? He sent fucking police and media, like all sorts of like puzzles and stuff, and they never caught the guy despite thinking they knew who he was. That's the only movie mm, I've watched. I don't and you think could, I saw this one. You should watch it. We should. That's gonna be a make Marvin watch for sure. <laughs> we gotta do it. It's such a good movie. You guys know I love horror movies. I talk about them all the time. That's not really a horror movie per se. It is like creepy. It is the only movie I've ever watched in my life that left me with like this, this like just feeling of just unease after I watched it because. Spoiler. They never find who the killer is. We all know this, just mm. living in real life. But the, mo fucking... the movie mm. presents it in such a creepy way. I remember the first time I watched it, I went outside after to smoke a cigarette at like four in the morning. And it was yeah. just, it was one of those like still, like calm summer nights. And I was just like, I'm really fucking creeped out right now because anybody could be the Zodiac killer. <laughs> it was, it's an effective movie. It's very mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, you know what else isn't a horror movie? This might be a nice segue for us if we're done with the news. <laughs> yeah, we are. All right. Well, thank you for the, the news, we watch. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, listen. We're talking about... I was about... misled by this movie. I... What are we talking about? This is uh, The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Mm -hmm. um, now, listen. Obviously, Dracula is one of the most popular and pervasive figures in human culture. Uh, countless adaptations have been done, some better than others. Sometimes you get fun, creative, and unique stories like Renfield, which we recently watched. Uh, and other times, not so much, like uh, The Last Voyage of Demeter. <laughs> you know? It's just the way it is. So mm -hmm. this is uh, based on Bram Stoker's Dracula, published in 1897. And Dracula... Damn. Dracula, the novel, is what's called an epistolary novel, which means it's written as a series of letters, journals, and other types of documents like that. Uh, this story... I don't really like those, I'm just going to say. I don't know if I... That's fair. ...can enjoy... I don't know if I've ever re really... Uh, I don't think I've read anything like read that. One. I've never yeah. read Dracula. Seems hard to read. Um, this story 
is based off of um, a chapter of the novel Dracula, and it's told through the journal entries of the ship's captain. Um, and this is directed by Andre Avridal. And my guy Andre, he's he's done some good movies. He's really yeah. You wouldn't think so because they look a little bit like sort of low budgety and not that great. But I'm gonna tell you right now, Troll Hunter's a fucking great movie. Autopsy of Jane Doan is a sleeper that I watched randomly one day on Netflix. Great fucking movie. He directed Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which I think was written by Guillermo del Toro. And now this, hmm. The Last Voyage of Demeter. Um, unfortunately, does not live up to the other films. <laughs> but <laughs> um, it stars Corey Hawkins, who I thought was Childish Gambino at first. That might be racist oh my to say. God. But... You, yeah, you got to stop. <laughs> he looks just like him. You don't we think he looks like no, him? No, Dusty. No, no, we can't keep allowing this. <laughs> you don't think he looks like him? This is getting this is getting crazy, <laughs> bro. You don't think it looks this like it? It's like borderline, like yeah, it's uh, like almost. Come on, they call them folks on you. <laughs> them, <laughs> them <laughs> folks. I thought he looked like him a little bit. Anyway, I need a, somebody pull up a side by side. I apologize. <laughs> I'll put the side by side in the video. Um, he plays uh, Clemens. We got uh, Aisling Franciosi, which is Anna. Liam Cunningham is Captain Elliot. And David Dastmalchian. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but he's in a lot of shit. He plays Wojcik. Dastmalchian. Mm. Dastmalchian, right. okay. And then a bunch of other people I've really never heard of. Um, and, yeah, so our story here is basically about some crew members of the cargo ship, the Demeter. They're transporting some shit from Romania to London. And unfortunately for them, uh, Dracula's on board. Now, the Count's reasons for moving to England are never explicitly spelled out in the novel that I, ju I just mm. wanted to mention. Uh, yeah. But at the time Dracula was written, England was like the world power, and London was pretty much like the capital of the world, at least right. as far as the British author Bram Stoker was concerned. So... Yeah. Anyone with aspirations would, of course, probably move to London. Um, but right. in the novel, there are hints that Dracula wanted to expand his power, possibly even creating a new monarchy of vampires. Um, but in the film, our character Anna just says, like, oh, he, like, ran out of people to feed on in Romania. So it's just like a little throw away. A throw Which makes away no line. sense. But that's our story. This is the ship sailing from Romania to London, Dracula's on board, and he starts, like, picking off the crew one by one. Um, so, let's start with... Let's start with Dusty. Dusty's looking a little pissed off over there. <laughs> what do you think about this movie? There are some things I really liked about this movie, and then there's some things I really didn't like about this movie. <clears throat> I kind of like the way that Dracula was portrayed in some of those, like... When, when he looked like he was, like, flailing there a little bit, uh, it was, like, bait to, like, what the fuck is that? And then you get a little closer, yeah. and you're like, what the fuck is that? And then he slices your throat. Like, right. I wanted a lot more of that, but it seemed like, I don't know, uh, it's just, there was, this was really slow. Um, I didn't like, I like the fucking, fucking sleek Dracula, where he's, like, in more of the human form. You like that like, slick back hair shit that Nicholas Cage has like going on. Fucking, he's got the swag. Yeah. But. Yeah. No, I like this. He was, he was more of a hunter. He was chasing his prey yeah. around. He was playing with it a little bit. I had got yeah. that whole aspect and I, I kind of liked it, but there wasn't enough of it. Well, I mean, we, we, we know how the movie starts because I mean, we know that we see the ship crash. So we're basically, you automatically assume, okay, nobody fucking made it. Yeah. And yeah. then it, it just takes forever to kill everybody. And there's uh, a few plot holes. But, okay. Marvin, know. what about what's your little synopsis? I did enjoy watching this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think the mm -hmm. the plot was particularly strong, I guess. Um I think uh I like I like the I like the setting for sure. I think that carried a bit. Like the the, the overall vibe was uh, like a big um enjoyment factor for me. Right. Um, like I said, I don't really like how uh, Dracula looks. 
but mm. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so to touch on what Dusty said, um, it's important to note that in the novel, right, Bram Stoker's Dracula's Dracula and like subsequent vampires were very like animalistic, mm. and it was a while before they started to well not Dracula but vampires in general they get, yeah and keep in mind vampires it's one of like the oldest human lores that there are about stories about like fucking demons and stuff that come out at night and fucking feast and all this shit yeah but, they have like yeah. special burial stuff yeah. that's like thousands of years old but Dracula vampire graves yeah Dracula <laughs> though is not so what I'm specifically referring to is when you mentioned his like where he was like sort of like playing coy well, he was doing that because he was in a weakened state. In the book, Dracula, Drac the original version of Dracula is not as powerful as he's come to be over the over the years. Um, and just from traveling, again, never really explicitly discussed, but it's alluded to that he's just he hasn't fed, and he's like very yeah. weakened. Uh, Dracula does have a lot of weaknesses. The reason he travels with soil from his from Romania is that he can't like rest without it. So he's traveling with dirt from Romania. Um, okay. He can't. He's he can't uh, like power up unless he's near his grave, and like things like that. Oh yeah. Um, also, I interesting fact about Dracula: he doesn't die in sunlight. Regular vampires, I guess, do, but he doesn't. He just can't. He's not at full power during the day, so mm -hmm. he can't like turn into his younger form or all that shit. Right. Uh, huh. That being said, I did not enjoy watching this movie, and I did not enjoy the portrayal of Dracula. Uh, I thought it was a big fail on the part of the director here to basically just have like a generic CGI beast be <laughs> Dracula. It looked like a little ghoul. It looked like the, basically. It, it looked terrible, um, in my opinion. Like. I don't know. The CGI in the movie just looked really cheap, and I think that's unfortunate. I think if it leaned into the use of practical effects, the movie would have been way more intense. Um, Probably. Because the movie does build some, like, cool moments, but then they reveal a shitty CGI creature. Like, at the moments of climax <laughs> of these intense scenes, it's just, like, a shitty CGI thing. And it kind of just, right. like, it kind of ruins it, I think. Um, and in, like, all those scenes, really, now when I'm thinking about it. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, when they had him, like, being creepy and, like, standing behind people, I thought that was cool, but, like you said, once you saw there's some moments. what he actually looked like, it was, like, kind of a letdown. Yeah, a bit. there's some cool moments, like, when um, when the character Clemens, when he's on, like, the, you know, by the steering wheel, and he, like, looks out and sees, like, the vague image of a thing. Right. And is like, he's like, yo, is that you, or whatever the fuck, and then, like, he looks back and it's gone, like... That's a cool moment, but then like ten right. seconds later, it's just like be, it's revealed to be just like uh, just a CGI creature, very generic, <laughs> very bland. Um, right. <clears throat> yeah, I don't understand why movies have to just continually kill dogs. Like, can we are we done with that like horror movie trope thing? Like, I'm so sick of it. Like, leave nope. the poor animal alone. Does the dog die? Dot com. Yeah, the thing I've I talked know. about it before. I remember it is. I should have <laughs> referred to it. I should have paused I the movie. Typed maybe was does the kid die because I didn't expect the kid to be killed off because you know movies kind of stray away from that a lot. Movies yeah. don't kill that was kids. Pretty very surprising. Often. Yeah, that was pretty surprising for me in this. Like, okay, I thought it was gonna get real crazy after that, but it really didn't. So it was like, oh, okay, that was cool, but yeah. everything else is still kind of a letdown. Yeah. Imagine living in any time like prior to the last eighty years or so, where you just like I was laughing at one point in the movie where he the Anna first like reveals herself or whatever. And yeah. he's like giving her a blood transfusion without knowing like the blood type or anything. Yeah. He's just like, gotta give her a transfusion, sticks Hope the it works. Up. <laughs> a comment made when we were watching it. Yeah, what if it's the wrong blood type? Yeah, just any right. blood will do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um I thought who did you guys think was going to survive? I thought it was gonna be Clemens and Toby only. I thought it would be on the, on the lifeboat. For sure. I didn't I mean, okay, so well. To answer your question, I have to give my overall thesis on the film. I knew the okay. ending of the movie, like Dusty said. We know the ending of the movie because the movie shows you the ending of the movie, number one. Number two, I'm familiar with the story. So I don't really mm. actually know who this movie was made for, to be perfectly honest. 
Um, I don't imagine, Marvin, you're probably not like super up on your Dracula lore, right? <laughs> Definitely not. No. I don't even think this movie was made for you because like it shows you <laughs> the ending. And right. you're not an idiot. The movie telegraphs so much like what's going to happen. Like, yeah, the ship well, is the cursed. The ship the is doomed. Is, it's the last voyage right. of the ship, too. So I, I just well, don't. They, they tried to throw a little loop, you know, when the cook took the lifeboat away and you're like, yeah. oh, shit, there's no lifeboat anymore. Yeah. What's going to happen now? Well, and that, <laughs> that, in, that. Then the lifeboat just big, comes back, too. A it's big like, pothole uh, uh, later. Like, they're like, oh, we're getting close to shore. Uh, we better burn the ship and kill him, motherfucker. He flies. You already know he flies. <laughs> if you're close to shore, You've seen him fly. He's just gonna fly to shore. What the well, fuck? <laughs> and that leads me to my other issue too: is that, like, all right. After they saw the first guy burn up, why yeah. weren't they staying up all night <laughs> Thank with you. like some kind of defense situation set up? and just sleeping during the day on the fucking deck. I just want to say, so this movie, I think, would have been way better if it just used the concept of being on board a ship with Dracula instead of doing a one-to-one adaptation of the story. Because Mm. this had a pretty good opportunity to go the route of the thing, I think. Because there was there was like a brief there was a brief moment where the crew was like, kind of like, did you fucking kill all the animals? Yeah. 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 So I think they could have built like real tension with like some sort of paranoia and like distrust among the crew. But the way the movie was, it was just like, I thought it was pretty boring to be honest. It had like no tension really in my opinion. And, uh, but I think the big, the biggest overall thing is that the movie suffered from the fact that again, I'm familiar with the source material. So I know where it was heading. There weren't really any surprises and that mixed with the fact that the creature was just kind of like lame CGI gray thing. I was just like, eh, I don't know. Didn't really have much going for it for me. But to bridge off of what you said, this movie's based on a story that was written in the fucking 1800s, right? Right. And stories like that don't adhere to the logic of modern day that we currently live in. They're myth and legend of the time. So like you were just saying, right. you know, a story like this was probably fucking horrifying back then. When yep. it was common to fucking take a journey on a sh- cargo ship for several months at a time. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? With no, yeah. No with med- nothing. No, yeah. yeah, no medication, nothing. That is terrifying, yeah. But like today, by today's standards, if like we're on a boat together, the three of us with like some other crew members and like first animals get slaughtered, couple guys start <laughs> going missing, then we find them slaughtered. Like clearly something is on board that shouldn't be on board. <laughs> There's no other explanation. You're out at sea. Right? Mm-hmm. So, like... Well, then when you start getting answers, like, something is on board, and the lady wakes up, and she says, it comes out at night. Yeah, she explicitly like... explains how <laughs> Dracula operates. And yeah, like, nah, don't believe that. Yeah, it's she... gotta be a, a logical and We'll look whatever. a little bit during the day to find him, but we didn't really... We couldn't find him, so... Uh, it's just... Because they, they kept pushing Clemens to be, like, the logical guy... That eventually, like, oh my god, he finally sees the light. Dracula is real, and he has to hunt him down. But it's like, no, bro. I don't know if Clemens is actually in the story. I have to go back and double check. I forgot. I don't think he is, but he is presented like a man of science, right? He's a doctor. Mm. He went to a prestigious school. Um, and there's that conversation around the dinner to the dining room where they're like, oh, what are you going to do with your 75 bucks? And he's like, oh, he's like, my my goal for life is uh, nothing that coin could t- could do for me. And then he goes on mm. to explain, like, I want to understand the world, right? He is very, and he's an astronomer, like he could track, he could map the stars and stuff. He's very much a man of science. So of course yeah. it makes sense for him not to like really right away just be like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, oh yeah, it's a demon in the night. Sure. <laughs> totally get that part. But it, yeah. was, it was done in such a weak way because by that point, so much extreme and non-believable shit happened where exactly. even a man when of science would be like supernatural logical deduction of, right. oh hey these people are burning up and uh, it's daylight and nighttime right. and- even a man of science would be like all right let's m- i can't dismiss anything at this point right scully would fucking break at that point oh yeah oh you haven't seen good scully yet marvin <laughs> You, you've only. Yeah, I'm, you've, I'm still in the, de- the denial Scully phase. I you've, think. you've seen the Scully whose sole purpose is to like discredit Mulder. Um, <laughs> but like, 
Yeah, so so like, you know, she comes into the movie. Her first dialogue is explicitly explaining how Dracula operates. Oh yeah, he's a fucking creature from <laughs> our place. He hunts at night and sucks our blood. But it it's like it can't be. It's like 45 minutes before they decide to even search the ship at that point. Multiple the people ship go wasn't missing. Even that big, bro. It yeah. was very slow. They could have fucking <laughs> Yeah, they could have searched every inch of that place. Like they know. tried to fill it with all these tense, weird scenes, and it just made it feel like it was drawn out. Like, yeah, it was a point like where at the end when they were fighting, like uh, my eyes were starting to close and I was dozing off a little bit because I'm like, "Oh shit, we're finally here!" But Jesus Christ, I'm tired. <laughs> I, it, I, I did like the portrayal of the uh, created vampires, though. Like how it was kind of like a it was zombies, kinda like rabies. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that is the thing, like. So in vampire lore, right, you have your, your, I guess, I don't know, higher vampires like Dracula who are powerful, who could shapeshift, like regular fucking like punk ass vampires can't do all that shit. Right. It's one of the reasons why I really like. control themselves. Yeah. That sort of thing. Right. Um, this was, they, this is more of like a blood infection. And again, it's very faithful to the book Dracula because in the book Dracula, he, he, uh, there's a character in the book who is all infected by him and it's not until yeah. Dracula dies that she is like freed of the, the, the curse or whatever the fuck. Um, mm. So yeah, I think really that was the big failure of this movie is that it did do just a one-to-one -one adaptation of the book. Um, not to say that Dracula is not a good book. I've never read it. I'm sure it's great. It's obviously had a lasting impression on humanity. <laughs> right. Um, that being said, stuff that was scary in the 1800s isn't really scary in 2023. And I feel like you have to <laughs> sort of like adapt it to our time period. Um, I appreciate what it was trying to do, but personally, and I don't know if you've ever seen it, Marvin, I, I would assume Dusty has, but I think Bram, Dra Bram Stoker's Dracula from 1996 mm. That was, I'm sorry, 1992, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, was a way better adaptation of that book um, mm -hmm. because that movie builds on the book of Dracula, doesn't just do a one-to-one -one representation. So what do I mean by that, Marvin? Again, in the book, there's really no explanation for Dracula. He's just a count who's a vampire, goes to England for no reason whatsoever, does some stuff, and then dies at the hands of, <laughs> yeah. at the hands of uh, Van Helsing. Well, right. the movie, this movie, Bram Stoker's Dracula, takes some of the lore of the book itself and incorporates it into the movie. So um, there have been countless scholars and people who have done research and talks and written books on how Bram Stoker came to create the character of Dracula. Um, Bram Stoker kept like journals and like diaries and all this stuff. And ultimately, he just was inspired by a lot of, like, Romanian folklore of the time. Yeah. But there are some people that believe he was inspired by um, a historical figure, Vlad the Impaler, who was, like, a brutal fucking ruler um, and warlord. Mm. Some people think he was inspired by, um, what's her name? Uh, oh, God. Who's the, the uh, forget her name. She, she... She was basically like a, a a mass murderer. She was like a um I gotta look it up. Hang on a second. One moment, please. Elizabeth Bathory. So she was mm. a she was a noble person, a rich noble person. Her and her slaves basically um kidnapped and murdered like hundreds of young women. Um of the time and she it, the story goes that she would like bathe in their blood and she thought it gave her like eternal life she thought it kept her youthful oh shit so the two pervasive theories is that bram stoker was inspired both by elizabeth bathory and vlad the impaler both of which cannot be confirmed in any way shape or form however right. the film bram stoker's dracula from 1992 took the rumors of the inspiration of uh, vlad the impaler and incorporated it into the movie so in the movie, Dracula is basically Vlad the Impaler. And the movie gives Dracula something to empathize with. The story is basically about uh, Vlad Dracula, who's a conqueror, 
And he comes home from conquering the Ottoman Empire to find that his wife had committed suicide because she was given a false report that he died in battle. Mm. So heartbroken, he renounces his belief in God and kills himself. And he drinks the blood of the statue or whatever, and he's resurrected as a vampire Dracula. Well, like the book, um, Jonathan Harker, who's like a lawyer, basically, who's helping Dracula with like real estate, visits his mansion. <laughs> yeah. And this happens in the book. But in the movie, they take it a step further, and Dracula sees a picture of Jonathan Harker's fiance, and he thinks it's the resurrected uh, it's his resurrected wife. Right. And that's what prompts him to travel to London to go find mm -hmm. her and like seduce her and be his wife. So, so it gives it more depth than like yes. meaning. Yeah. It takes the story from the book and then adds a whole bunch of stuff into it to make Dracula an empathetic character. He's not just like some fucking evil monster. Um, right. And again, this isn't me criticizing the book Dracula. It, 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 it was effective for its time, but it's not effective for now storytelling yeah, no, and stuff that. has gotten a lot better and i just i feel right. like the failure of this movie was just doing exactly what the book did and like here here's the story from the book in 2023 it was just i don't know everything was just boring about it it's a bit boring yeah and like i wonder who makes that decision like we're gonna do this as a one-to-one -one, or we're gonna add some i don't know more modern elements to the movie i i just I mean, think ultimately it's the director that decides. the writer the director yeah yeah I mean, right. this was written That's by true. two writers, um, Zach Olkowitz and Bragi F. Shoot. I don't know who these guys are. The, I, I, I forget their, the, the Andre Overdahl, the, the director. I think he's Norwegian or something like that. Okay. So it's like, yeah, I mean, clearly it was a choice to be like, hey, man, this is a cool segment. Like, it's a cool idea. Like, that the fact that, that Dracula oh, yeah, is great. broken yeah. down into, like, letters and stuff, and this is just a chapter of the book, I think that's awesome. But, like, I don't know. It needed something more because it just didn't do it. It wasn't scary. There was no tension it wasn't in it. It was scary at all. I didn't give a fuck about any of the characters other than the dog. And, like, you, <sighs> you just know that they're all going to die because of the name of the movie, and they show it to you. And then there's the people like me who know the story in general. So I already know how it's going to end. There's just nothing there to keep me interested and hooked. And I, I was like, like Dusty, I wasn't falling asleep, but I was like checking my phone and drifting and I was writing notes for the show today. And like, you know, it just, I, overall, I did not enjoy the movie. Yeah. Why did Clemens, I mean, I get why, but like a doctor becoming a, a vampire hunter is like, bit much i don't know it's a, it's a little weird is that what happened at the end i didn't even like catch that part that he like adopt he like becomes a vampire hunter he, yeah he's like i'm gonna have to hunt down this man and then yeah, he gets like, scratched by him or something i don't i didn't get the ref the, the relevance there he got scratched on the neck by him yeah and then he like and dracula like disappears out the the front of the bar egg probably yeah. supposed to leave you with the fact that like Dracula's got there. his claws in him. No, meaning like he can oh. possess him because that's how Dracula's oh. controlling like the zombie guy or whatever. Right. Yeah. Ah, man. I don't know. Yep. Another unfortunate movie that could have been way better than it was. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I think... Give it a little bit more love. And I think... That's all we're asking for. Like the lore of Dracula and vampires and vampirism is so much more interesting than the movie. Kind of mm. like when we watched The Hole <laughs> in the Ground. Like the lore of, of that was way more interesting than the actual movie. Um, yeah. yep. and that, and that's like, why, yep. and that's why I loved Renfield so much. And I think why you guys did too, it was like such a fresh, interesting take on these characters that have been around for centuries. Renfield is from the book, Dracula, Dracula is from the book, Dracula, Van Helsing's from Dracula. Like all these characters we've grown to know are from the book, but it, it presents them in such an interesting and fun way. Mm -hmm. Um, and this movie and Renfield didn't. had the practical effects that were way better than what we got. I think the only practical effects in this movie were like the wounds of Dracula's attacks, but then they oh, were yeah. like covered by CGI blood that looked terrible. <laughs> so I was like, what is that? Like, like, why'd they do that? I don't know. Maybe it's yeah. to say, I, I don't know. Maybe practical effects are more expensive in some cases than cheap CGI. I, I, I don't really know. Probably. But uh, yeah, this was not for me. Not for me at all. Um, did you enjoy uh, Castlevania? The cartoon on Netflix or the yeah. games? The, the no, yeah, the shows Netflix. are great. The shows yeah. are great. Have you seen those, Marvin? 
Castlevania no I haven't it's an animated series on Netflix pretty yeah, I heard it was great based though. more on the games than the, the it's lore, very good Castlevania lore is almost as good as Bram Stoker lore. oh shit yeah I definitely want to check out Castlevania <clears throat> I've heard I've gotten it recommended before yeah I mean listen vampire shit has been done left and right so there's like not a lot of new territory to uncover Again, right. another reason why I appreciate Renfield so much. It's telling the same story. It's just here's Dracula and his fucking familiar, but it's done in an interesting way. Um, <laughs> I think one of some of the best vampire lore I could think of personally is in The Witcher. Um, it gives like vampires this hierarchy and like there's different mutations of vampires and breeds of vampires and stuff. It's very mm, interesting to yeah. me. Um, and you know. Like you don't prefer Twilight's uh, <laughs> no, portrayal of no, vampires? I, no, not not so much. <laughs> no. Uh, but th th yeah, I don't know. It, this kind of disappointed me. I, I I thought, I I thought it was gonna be better than it was. Like I thought at the very least, I didn't think it was gonna be a great movie, but I thought at the very least, like it'd be fucking fun and interesting. But it it wasn't even really that. Uh, yeah, I was expecting like Underworld, except on a ship. No, I didn't think it was gonna be like that. <laughs> that's like that's like pure action. Underworld, right? Yeah. Well, I knew it was going to be a little bit slower and a little more, you yeah. know, suspenseful and horrific, but and it wasn't. It wasn't suspenseful yeah. at all. Mm -mm. So, eh. yeah. Anyway, disappointing. It's got a six point two. And I, do you guys have anything else to talk about? Really, There's nothing happens really in the movie. To be honest, like normally it's we'll like we'll like so. talk yeah, about like he, plot he, points he, and like, shit. There's like nothing. Yeah, he gets out and. He slowly he starts, starts to power up, yeah. Getting his power up, and uh, yeah. And he's a bat thing, that's it. They figured out, <laughs> by then it's too late. You know, some of them advantage ship and lived, and yeah. others didn't. You know, I almost think this movie would have been better if it was, like, a direct follow-up to Bram Stoker's Dracula from 1992. Like, hmm. like, if this took place, I mean, obviously you can't get Gary Oldman to come black and play Dracula, but, but in, in that sure movie... Sure you could, why not? You probably could. In that movie, at the end... Dracula takes on the form of like a fucking man bat thing and it's like actually scary in that movie they could have at yeah. least like used the same design or something just tie it right. to that and not the thing like you know ah uh, whatever it is what it is <laughs> things happen <laughs> not everything could be a hit and uh this no. wasn't this has a 6.3 6.2 I'm sorry on IMDB uh I I gotta give it like a five I did not enjoy it at all yeah, I feel you on that. I probably would give this a six because I didn't have any expe expectations, but I didn't hate it. Okay, that's fair. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think it was complete mid. Like I, like I said, I did enjoy it, so it's a little bit. Yep. It's it's on the cusp. Okay, yeah, no, it's like it's like on the low end too. Okay, yeah, between um, what, being almost been, mid. It's so, definitely a downgrade from six point two, but it, I don't know <laughs> that it's a five and a half or five. I because there's some stuff I really liked. But there's yeah. some stuff I really didn't like, so I don't know. I would recommend it. Maybe it's a I one like time the watch, the captain. Yeah, I, I was gonna say the other stuff instead. But that's the that's our boy from uh, Game of Thrones, so mm -hmm. he's a great actor. I was just gonna say, if I had to pick one thing I really liked about this movie, was some of the acting, not all of them, because not a lot of them had a lot of dialogue. Right. Of David Desmalkian or whatever the fuck his name is, I thought he was pretty good. Uh, yeah. Liam Cunningham was good. Corey Hawkins was good. I thought Anna didn't really have much to do other than like be like, move. I'm a strong female. Let me shoot the door open. Like she was kind of just like a boring character to me. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Some of the acting was good, but that's really the only thing. Scenery was cool, but again, most of it's like CGI. There was like one moment of actual yeah. scenery it looked like. And that was when like they're like in the beginning where they're like entering Romania or wherever the fuck they were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So you guys gave us sixes. Is that where where we're at? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I give it a five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. that's it, folks. Not great. I wish we had no. more to talk about, but there's really not much to the movie. They're sailing. He gets out, starts picking people off one by one, and powers up, and that's it. And then the movie ends. The ship. The ship is like everything that they tell you in the first two seconds of the movie happens. So that's it. Yeah. Um. Let's read a comment or two, shall we? We always like reading yeah. reviews. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, they did show the paranoia a little bit, like you were talking about with the... It, it was for stuff, like you know? one like, second. 
I, you know, I know nobody on the ship would have done this, and there's only two people on the ship who I don't know or I've never sailed with, and it's you and the lady. But he's like, okay, well, what, have you fucking killed all the animals? No, not really. The lady didn't do it. And Here's so. a good review. Why Hollywood is Dying. The Last <laughs> Voyage of the Demeter is a classic style story gone woke. Many of us just want to view a good story. Many do not want to view propaganda and agenda, preachy-oriented characters and or stories. Unless part of the story entails a social message, a religious message, or a political message, the two do not work together. Mix the two, you got a redundant, disjointed, and formulated story. Regrettably, The Last Voyage of the Demeter will follow the woke formula. You get a minority character who is near perfect oh, in a James Bond near style. Perfect. Yeah, in a James Bond style way, who eventually has to give a social message Ooh. moment. The near perfect character kills suspense of of who survives or how each scene will play out. The characters or events do not even have to fit a historical narrative of the time, like having Robin being from Poland with laser. I don't know what this guy's talking about. What? It was the first black band to graduate so, Cambridge. Yeah. Like, yeah. Woke. The the, oh. the, the the darky savage moment was definitely a little <laughs> cringe, but yeah. it was uh I don't think it was like woke. The strong woman who is the repeat characters Ridley for the Alien series. She will either grab an axe or a gun, no shock value with this anymore. Then add a CGI superhero type bad guy fly around and add nothing to the story. Okay, so it's so funny to me that no matter what, there's always at least a person who thinks a movie's woke. What was woke I, in this movie? I'd be curious what you rate this versus Morbius, actually. <laughs> I mean, listen, two vastly different movies that get judged on different things. I think this could have been a very effective horror movie. I just don't think it could worked. Have, for sure. I just don't think the 1800 story translated to 2023. It, it does not. Yeah, untouched. No. They didn't do any effort to like sort of just give it a modern. Not, I don't even mean set it in a modern time. That's not what I mean. I mean, like, just give it a modern storytelling feel to it. Add something to it. Just like Bram Stoker's Dracula did, the Cop Coppola one. That movie made you feel for Dracula. Made him a like a. It made him an empathetic character. He's not just yeah. an angry beast. He's a man who's heartbroken because he lost the love of his life. It's just it, it, this was just. Well, I mean, it you're didn't supposed to see all sides of him, and this side of him was the, I'm weak and I'm going to London to start a new life because I'm bored in Romania and I'm gonna fucking feed on these guys and everybody's <laughs> gonna die when I get there. Like, it's really not. It's a simple story when you think about it, but it's the it's the bad side of him. It's the, I'm going to kill every motherfucker on the ship because I need to. But this doesn't even, yeah, I get it, but it's like so bland. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. they it, didn't it, commit it, either way or other. Like, another, like I said, they didn't have the romance side, but they also didn't really have like the full on action or it, even like horror e either. They like, they didn't no. commit to any like theme, I guess. It you doesn't also just assume. It doesn't yeah. even yeah. have to be a romance. It doesn't have to make him empathetic. He could still be a monstrous beast who's just out to kill shit. But, like, that didn't even do that effectively. Another example is Midnight Mass. I don't know if you guys have watched it. I've talked about it a hundred times, but it's a I show on... I watch it, yeah. You know, not, I won't spoil anything, but it is such a unique twist on the vampire genre without... Redefining everything <laughs> without <laughs> changing anything, really. It's still mm. a vampire story in every sense of the word. They never use the actual word vampire, which I think is really cool, but it's yeah. just different enough to make it fresh and unique. So, like, it, 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 yeah. it can be done, it has been done. This movie didn't do it. It wasn't woke. Whoever wrote that review, fucking shut the fuck up. Um, it was just they just played it too safe. I, one to one in the truest sense. Like, uh, yeah, I just feel like they wanted <laughs> to do that. I don't know why, but um, but yeah. Anyhow, yeah. Uh, that's gonna do it for us today, folks. Let us know in the comments if you watched uh, the last voyage of Demeter. Let us know if you liked it or not. Um, correct me if I need to be corrected on some of my Dracula lore because I've never read the book. I've only just stuff that I know from living life. Uh, but uh, yeah, keep track of us on our website harshlanguage.tv it has our links to everywhere you can what where you can watch the show listen to the show all that good stuff and uh, we'll be back next week for ninja turtles teenage mutant ninja turtles what's the what's the tag of the movie mutant mayhem mutant mayhem mutant so mayhem. uh check back with us if you're interested in hearing that one but we appreciate Banger. you watching or listening and uh we'll catch you later folks Costa. see you